I'm really tired today. I worked late last night. There's lots of overtime at my work right now. I'm a bus driver here for Ottawa, city of Ottawa. And man, we are short drivers. If you're looking for a job, come to Ottawa, become a bus driver. It pays good too. They're looking for all kinds of drivers, <laughs> okay? This is not a commercial for OC Transpo. It's just the facts of the matter. We need drivers. But you know, doing videos has not worked for me. I always like to put a video out at least once a week to help build awareness. If you think you're an alcoholic and you're struggling with your drinking, this is a great channel to come to because that's what it's all about. It's about living sober one day at a time. Or if you're in recovery and you're having difficulties, go through my channel. There's lots of videos there. There's lots of information. I'm an alcoholic and all I do is share my experience, strength and hope with other people, but hopefully that they can recover from this awful insidious illness of alcoholism. There is life after not drinking. There is life in recovery. There really is. Just take it one day at a time, okay? Thanks a lot for stopping by. You know, what I wanna talk about today, I wanna to talk about a step that I took that started off my journey of recovery. It was probably one of the biggest steps and only, it's only the step you have to do 100% when it comes to the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's the only one that you have to do 100%. The other steps you work on throughout your life, you really do. And what that step is, is step one. We admit it, we are powerless over alcohol and our lives have become unmanageable. I wanna talk about a few things in that step. Admitting, powerlessness, and unmanageability. I'm gonna share some of my experiences with that step, how I interpret it in early sobriety, and what I think it means today. And when I, you know, I've, you know, I've got a few years of sobriety underneath me, and I've looked at that step and talked about that step, sometimes to a blue in the face, and I just wanna share what I think it actually means, okay? So that's what this is about. This is, and to start off with, step one of Alcoholics Anonymous, like I said earlier, is the only step that you have to take 100%. You have to stop drinking completely in order to recover from alcoholism. So that's what step one is all about. It's admitting we are powerless over alcohol, our lives have become unmanageable, and we better do something about it. And the first thing we need to do is quit the alcohol. Quitting the alcohol set me on my journey of recovery, and it'll do the same for you. But a thing, couple things about that step that got me hung up on it. Hung up on it, okay? Admitting that we are alcoholic is honesty. Admitting to ourselves that we have a problem with the drinking. A lot of us can do that real, relatively easy. I know I did it relatively easy. Admitting that I had a drinking problem, no problem, no problem. My life was a disaster when I came into Alcoholics Anonymous. I was full of rage, I was full of anger. I was basically on the street. I had no job, no one wanted anything to do with me. I was drinking by myself. I was in trouble with the law. You know, the list can go on and on. There wasn't too many good things happening for me or with or in my life when just before I took step one. So admitting I was an alcoholic or maybe the booze had something to do with it wasn't too difficult. And I think for a lot of us, it's not too difficult to admit that the drinking has something to do with it, right? Our problems in life. It really does. No, I, I think so anyways. I'm just guessing, but maybe you can tell me what you think in the comments below. But I think a lot of us have a problem with this part of this step, powerlessness over alcohol. And that's where I had a major problem with powerlessness. Because when I drank, I felt powerful. Booze did a lot of things for me that I couldn't do for myself. It boosted my self-esteem. It took away my shyness. It made me more sexual. You know, I was easier in bed. It made me more outgoing. There was a lot of things it did for me that gave me power. So for me to admit that I was powerless over alcohol, I said to myself, how the hell is that? How the hell is that? And somebody explained it to me like this. And I believe this is what it means. Powerless over alcohol simply means that when we start drinking, we don't know where it's gonna end. You know, we're gonna end up in jail, in a car crash. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen when we're in the influence of alcohol. And that was like me. That really was like me. And another part of the powerlessness over alcohol was how much I was gonna drink. Once I started to drink, was I able to stop? And the reality of it is, 
I wasn't able to, I shouldn't say I wasn't able to stop. At that time, I didn't want to stop. I loved to drink. I loved it. I loved it so much, it took away everything out of my life. So once I started drinking, I wanted more. And I wanted more. So I'd go out for one beer, it turned into 12 beers. Or I'd go out for an hour, it turned out to be all night. Those sort of things. So alcohol, once I consumed it, my future, my immediate future was very unpredictable. And it usually went to the negative side. So powerlessness, that's what it means to me now. I can't control my booze. I can't control the amount of my booze. And I can't control the outcome of my drinking. I might end up in jail. A lot of times I ended up in jail and drinking. Went out trying to have a good time, ended up getting in a fight and ended up in jail. And most of the time, well, well not most of the time, all the time, I was under the influence of in, I was under the influence of alcohol. So powerlessness, I must come to a part in my life, I must come to a conclusion in my life that I cannot drink safely. I cannot drink safely. You don't have to admit it wholeheartedly, but at least 99.9% .9 you have to admit it. That if I drink, my life turns to garbage. My life turns negative if I drink. And I have no control over it. And that is basically a definition of an addict or somebody who suffers from alcoholism. Most people have a drink and they've had enough of it. They have a drink, they feel tipsy. Well, an alcoholic, they start feeling buzzy, they want more. And that's the way I was. So that powerlessness is a really tricky part when it comes to that step. Because even when you're recovering, when you have a week or two, that powerlessness, that feeling of powerlessness or alcohol is dangerous to us or it's gonna cause us harm, kind of leaves us. And we think maybe we can drink safely. Maybe we can go back out. Maybe I can control my drinking. And that powerlessness can play tricks on us. But we need to be honest, admit that we are alcoholics and be honest with ourselves and start working a program of recovery. Okay, that's what you need to do because it'll reinforce that step one. All the other steps reinforce step one. Step two, step three, they all reinforce how powerless we are over drinking. How powerless, and it's really, really important. I think that's where a lot of us get hung up on when it comes to that step. Another part of that step where a lot of us find it easier to identify with, I think, is the unmanageability of our lives. It's not hard to figure out if we're alcoholics. It's not hard, like the, I shouldn't say that. It's not hard to figure out the damage that we have caused around us due to our drinking. At the end, for myself, like I said, I was unemployed. I used to be employed all the time. I had charges. I was verge of bankruptcy. I had no friends. I was always angry. I had health issues. It goes on and on and on. And all I had to do was look behind me of all the bridges I burnt. All the family members that didn't want any more to do with me. My friends were all alcoholics. The unmanageability that alcoholism caused me, not living up to my responsibilities, being abusive, being violent because of the drinking because of I couldn't take life one day at a time without being drunk, so I go berserk when I was off the booze. So the unmanageability part is really easy for a lot of us to identify with. It really is. It's, it's, it's simple for us to identify with. It was for me. But the thing is, is that powerlessness is the hard part. Are we powerless over alcohol? Are you convinced? Have you had enough pain and suffering or losses in your life that maybe there's a chance that alcohol is causing you your problems? Is there a chance of that? Is there a chance? If there is, there probably is that you're an alcoholic. If you're watching this video, you're probably questioning your drinking as you're watching it. Maybe I do have a, a drinking problem. Maybe you do. And a personal thing I want to talk about on this step is that I thought something was supposed to happen when you, when you quit drinking. Like when I went into 12 step program and I went into treatment and all this kind of stuff, 
I thought there was more to the step. Like the step itself had more positive impact in my life than it, than it did at the time when I took it. But it did, it was very subtle. It was very, I don't know, quick. I admit it was powerless and my life has become unmanageable, it was like that. And I thought more was supposed to happen, that I was supposed to all of a sudden have this great life. And I was supposed to have the girlfriend and the house and all this kind of stuff. Well, it wasn't at all like that. Doing step one is really wasn't that exciting in my life. It really wasn't. Life didn't get exciting until I started moving forward in the 12 steps and rebuilding my life. And I sat on step one for too long too. I just want to add this on. I sat there thinking that something was supposed to happen in my life or thinking that if I just put a plug, plug on the jug, that my life was going to get better. If I just simply quit drinking, life is gonna get better. Well, that's the unmanageability part, right? Because we need to work on ourselves, we need to work on our character defects, we need to clean house, help other people, all this sort of thing for us to get better. And our lives become more manageable. And the powerlessness, we don't become afraid of alcohol over time, okay? So that's my spin on step one. Honesty is really the foundation of step one. We need to get honest with ourselves. Admit we are powerless over alcohol. Honesty. And our lives have become unmanageable. Honesty. And the only person you have to be honest to is yourself. No one else. You have to look at yourself, look at your life, and say, you know something? Honestly, I have a problem with alcohol. Honestly, I really do. And all I have to admit it is to me, to myself, okay? So if you can do that, you're well on your way. Step one, far as I'm concerned, is almost like 40% of the program. But we need to do it 100%. We need to stop drinking and trust in the process. Trust in the journey of recovery. There is a great life in recovery. There is a full, happy, and free life in recovery. We just have to trust in the journey, get a sponsor, learn how to live sober one day at a time, and I tell you something, your life, you'll become, back, you'll become something that you never thought that you're able to do, and that is live sober, live happy, live joyous and free one day at a time without the use of alcohol or any other mind altering substance. That is the gift of this program. That is the gift of recovery. We must quit. We must work the program. We must do all those things, okay? And that's it, folks. That's my spin on step one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment below. If you didn't, leave a comment below. But can you all do me one favor? Can you all subscribe to my channel, okay? I really appreciate it. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. Stay safe, stay sober, and remember, there's no I in team. Community, community will help us get sober much, much easier. Ciao for now.